You're listening to the Jordan Seculo Show. Follow me at twitter.com forward slash Jordan Seculo. Welcome back to the Jordan Seculo Show. Each week, as you know, we have a featured member of Congress uh, letting you know more about the uh, the freshman class that came to Washington, D.C. at the 2010 election cycle as we get close to 2012 now and so many of the key issues that have been fought out in Congress by uh, these uh, brave leaders who uh, uh, so many you know, decided to get into the races, do something at the federal level because of what was happening in Washington, D.C. One of those folks, uh, Congressman Randy Holtgren uh, from Illinois' 14th uh, Congressional District. And Congressman Holtgren, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Jordan. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. L- let me ask you first about, uh, because you know, we try to use this segment so that people get to know uh, members of Congress better, especially because if they if they see you on television, they hear you on interviews or in the newspaper, they may, and if they're not from the state or the district, they may not know as much about uh, your personal background before Congress. Before you decide to run in the last election cycle, just tell people about uh, your career. What led you to, uh, because I know you have been you were involved in politics at the local and uh, state uh, state level as well, and in government as well, and uh, have a you know, law degree. So uh, just t- tell people about your personal life. Oh, that's great. No, I'm happy to. Most importantly, I have a wonderful wife, uh, my college sweetheart, been married a little over 20 years, and then four kids, 17 to 7. So a busy house back at home. Uh, and my background served in legal work. Uh, I'm an attorney, but also have my financial passed the financial test to uh, the Series 7 and Series 6 and Series uh, 67, other things that I've been involved in, uh, worked in the financial field in Chicago uh, for several years, and then also was a part-time legislator, work, uh, served in the Senate in Illinois for two terms, and then was in the House for four terms before that, and then started out in local government on the county board in DuPage County. So I uh, grew up in the funeral business. My family owns a funeral home in Wheaton, Illinois. Uh, so that has a big impact on me as well of just a understanding and a commitment to small business. Was, was there an issue that said, you know, this is why I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run for Congress show. It's a, you beat incumbent Democrat. It's, it's a district that has been more solidly conservative in the past, uh, but with the Obama election 2008 ha- had gone Democrat. Was there a reason why you said, was there one single issue that said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to make this switch. I'm going to run for Congress. Yeah. You know, I think it was multiple issues. I've really didn't have plans to run, uh, enjoyed the work I was doing, enjoyed the company I was with in Chicago, and enjoyed my work in the state Senate, uh, and yet just got so frustrated. And I saw pretty clearly uh, our representative, uh, who had just been elected in, I think it was uh, 2007, uh, and, or early 2008, and um, just was voting directly against what I felt so strongly about. He was supporting uh, everything that would enlarge the size of government, that would grow government intrusion into our lives and into our families. And I just felt so strongly that he wasn't re- representing me, wasn't representing my family, wasn't representing our district. And so tried to communicate and really didn't hear much back from them and just felt like you know, somebody's got to do something. My thought was maybe someday when the kids are grown, I'd be really interested in running for Congress if that ever opportunity ever came up. And it hit me that I don't know what this country is going to be like in another 15 or 20 years if we don't act now, if we don't step up and take responsibility for this. So that was really uh, the reason we got into this. Uh, my wife and I spent a lot of time talking about it, praying about it, talking to other people, and just felt confirmation that this was the right thing to do. Just felt convinced that we were called to run for Congress. We weren't sure if we were called to win or not, but uh, we ran as hard as we possibly could, and and, uh, we're so thankful that uh, we were successful in a challenging primary and also a challenging general election, and have just been working as hard as we possibly can, serving the people that we represent there, and and really seeking to do what's right in the votes uh, that I'm taking out here in Washington of trying to shrink the size of federal government to protect freedom, to protect liberty, uh, to protect families, uh, to protect life. Uh, these are the things that I'm passionate about and really uh, what I want to uh, continue to focus on for the time that I'm here. Congressman, and we're, again, we're talking to Congressman uh, Randy Holkren uh, from Illinois' 14th Congressional District. It came to Congressman, what I think is probably just looking at the battles that you faced and, uh, and, and this freshman class, members of Congress have faced, some of the toughest battles in, in recent history legislatively and where you've got the other side, you've got the President of the United States uh, saying all these statements, saying you basically you want to hurt the working people. You want to hurt senior citizens. You want to take health care for people, jobs. You need to raise taxes on folks. What has that been like for you? Because uh, you, you, you get elected after a tough election battle, 
and you get here, and I mean, it's been war, uh, you know, and, and I don't use that term lightly when you talk politics, but it has been legislative war uh, since, since you've been in Congress. It really has. You know, we didn't know exactly what we were going to get when we got here, uh, but it has been an incredible battle uh, for these last nine months. But I think it's making us stronger. Uh, I am in, so encouraged with the uh, 87 Republican freshmen. We're meeting every single week that we're out here in Washington and really reminding ourselves that we've been sent on a mission from the people, the American people, that they saw Washington was broken, that it was completely unaccountable to the citizens. And we've got to turn that around again. We cannot stop uh, until we see real change here. And I'm encouraged too, even though it has been a battle, it's been such a struggle. We're making a difference. The whole debate out here really has changed from what had been how big they could grow the size of government to now how much can we shrink the size of government? How much can we do to really protect freedom and liberty and uh, opportunity for our kids and our grandkids? And to do that, we've got to act responsibly right now. Uh, We've got to look at every item that we're spending and and question it. Does this make sense? Do we have constitutional authority to be doing this? We also have to be focusing on getting people back to work again. That is such a struggle. I see so many families out there that it's not that they've been out of work for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. It's been a couple of years that these people have been out of work, and it's breaking my heart as I talk to them. Uh, and yet I talk to small business owners who really would like to start hiring again, but they're scared to death of the federal government. They know they can do the job. They know they can provide the service or manufacture the product, but they can't deal with this unknown of what government's going to do to them through the health care bill, through regulation that's out of control, through a tax code system that doesn't make any sense, that pr- uh, punishes productivity. These are the things we've got to address right now uh, to get small business growing again and start them hiring people and uh, getting this confidence back. That's what I want to ask you next, about, because there was, I think, definitely a mood in 2010. Your constituents today, I feel like the left is trying to get people further and further into just this situation where they think, you know what, only the government is going to be able to help me. You know, we've gotten to a point where, you know, it's just, it's been a couple of years and if we don't have the government do this program, uh, you know, I'm going to be in serious trouble for now. Are your constituents, are they still, when, when you're at the base, are they getting more and more nervous and, and to a point, which is what I think the president of the United States wants, where they kind of say, throw their hands up there and say, okay, do what you need to do because I- I'm so concerned. Or are they still uh, do they still understand kind of the same message uh, from 2010 that uh, we've got to keep fighting on these issues because you know, the solutions that are being offered uh, by the president and, and, the, and you know, the Democrat-controlled Senate are, are not going to help you? It's a great question, and I think it just depends on the audience. We certainly have people who are coming, uh, who are being sent by MoveOn.org or other groups uh, to try and voice uh, really the thoughts of this administration and this president. But there's still a majority of of my citizens that I'm talking to and meeting with, and I I still see it kind of 70-30, where 70% of the people really get it. They're still committed to free enterprise. They would much rather have a, a paycheck than a welfare check. They want their kids to have opportunity and freedom and liberty. They don't want them to be in debt uh, from the day they're born. Most people still get that. Uh, I think they're frustrated. I think they're uh, recognizing more and more every day that government isn't the the answer, that really government's the problem, uh, that has caused much of the problems that we're dealing with. And I hear it from small business owners, again, mom and pop stores or small business uh, businesses that have been growing despite these challenging times, that they just want government to get out of the way. And I I hope people are still seeing that. I still think we've spent a lot of the month of August in our district work time meeting with people, meeting with workers, employees, uh, small business owners. And over and over again, we heard that same message of just give us some confidence. Let us know that if we're going to invest in ourselves and in our business, we're not going to be attacked by the federal government. We're not going to be punished for doing it. And I really think if we can get that confidence back, it'll start growing again. I'm still an optimist uh, in this country, and, and especially when I look in the eyes of my kids, I just see so much hope and, and potential in them that I just will not stop. I will keep fighting uh, to make sure that they have every opportunity uh, that they possibly could have uh, for their future. And so I just feel like I'm not going to let up, and I'm encouraged by the number of people that I see out there who still get it in spite of a lot of the national media out there trying to tell the other story or push the other side of it. Uh, it's just not sinking in. People see through it, and they still don't trust federal government. Yeah, folks, uh, we've been talking to Congressman Randy Holkin, our featured member of Congress this week, uh, Illinois' 14th Congressional District. Uh, final question for you, Congressman. People can find out more about you if you want to, folks, jordansecular.com. We know 2012 is going to be tough as well, and uh, uh, folks like you have been fighting hard uh, in Congress are going to need uh, the American people's support. And I think uh, p- the people of your district support and also uh, people 
people around the country need to, to, to learn because you, you're the ones who've been fighting the battles. Is this going to be a tough one? I mean, for, for, for folks like you who are, you know, who had 2010 was kind of a wave election. What, what do you think 2012 is going to be like? Well, Illinois is an interesting place. We have, we're really one of the only spots that have a democratically controlled legislature and governor. Uh, and so they control the redistricting process there. And Nancy Pelosi tried to push through the, the, the DCCC to try and win five seats back just in Illinois uh, for her to win back the speakership. And we're pushing back against that. We've got a lawsuit uh, to try and go against the gerrymandering uh, that the Democrats have done in Illinois. Uh, and I'm, I'm optimistic that that's going to be successful. But no matter what, yeah, I'm convinced that if we continue to do good work for the people that we represent, fighting for smaller government, fighting for more accountability, fighting for more jobs, uh, private sector jobs, good things are going to happen. I know someone has to represent the area that I currently represent coming up in 2012. And I know if we do our work well now, uh, the voters will respond well. So that's our focus is do the things that we can control, uh, which is staying accountable, staying in touch, being accessible, doing what we know is right and true, and ultimately leaving the results of these elections uh, to come and knowing that good things will happen. Congressman Randy Holkren, folks, uh, again, jordansecular.com. Find out more about him, his website there, his official website. Congressman Holkren, keep up the fight for us in Washington. We will. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks for all you're doing. Keep up the great work. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. 